In this video, we are going to look at a generalization of case 2 of master theorem. This generalization or extension will allow us to solve certain recurrences which we were unable to solve using the version of master theorem that we have discussed so far. So think of this generalization as extending case 2 to handle some extra recurrences which we were not able to handle using the version of master theorem that we've seen so far. If you recall, case 2 of master theorem said that if f of n and n to the power log base b of a have the same rate of growth, then the solution to the recurrence t of n equals a times t of n by b plus f of n the solution to that recurrence will be t of n is theta of n to the power log base b of a multiplied by log n. So this was the scenario where the level sums at every level in the recursion tree were the same. And so the total cost of the recursion tree was the cost at any particular level multiplied by the height of the tree and the height of the recursion tree is log n. Here is a more general version of this particular case. Some books mention this generalization itself as case 2 of master theorem. So, this is what the generalization says. If f of n is theta of n to the power log base b of a multiplied by log n raised to the power k. So, just a minor note on the notation. Log n raised to the power k is denoted by this superscript k over log n. So this is equivalent to saying log n, the whole thing raised to the power k. So if f of n is not exactly n to the power log base b of a in terms of its rate of growth, but it's n to the power log base b of a multiplied by some power of log n. Okay, this power is, this power k is a constant and it's greater than or equal to 0. So it could be 0 in which case we're talking about f of n being theta of n to the power log base b of a. But it could also be 1 or 2 or 10 or 15, any positive constant. So, if f of n is, has this particular form or this particular rate of growth, then this generalized version of case 2 of master theorem says that the solution to the recurrence is given by t of n equals theta of n to the power log base b of a multiplied by log n raised to the power k plus 1. So what I have marked in green here is the difference between this generalization and case 2 of master theorem that we have seen so far. The additional, uh, the additions that the generalization incorporates is what I have marked in green. So, f of n need not have exactly the same rate of growth as n to the power log base b of a. There could be this extra factor of log n to the power k for some 
number k greater than or equal to 0 and in such cases t of n is given by theta of n to the power log base b of a multiplied by log n raised to the power k plus 1 as opposed to just log n. So note that this particular case is a specific form of this condition when k is exactly equal to 0. The version of case 2 we have seen so far is a special case of this generalized version of case 2 when k is equal to 0. So if k is equal to 0, f of n is theta of n to the power log base b of a and the solution is given by theta of n to the power log base b of a multiplied by log n. Now k plus 1 in that case will be 0 plus 1 or just 1. So there will be a single, uh, there will be a single power of log n, just a single multiplier of log n with n to the power log base b of a in the solution to t of n. So you just have to put k equal to 0 here to get the specific case that we have considered to be case 2 so far. Now this generalized version of case 2 allows us to solve the recurrence that we saw in the previous video which we discovered did not fall into any of the three cases of master theorem. But with this extension to case 2, we can actually solve that recurrence. So the recurrence that we were looking at in the previous video was t of n equals 4 times t of n by 2 plus n square log n. a was 4, b was 2 and f of n was n square log n. n to the power log base b of a was n to the power log base 2 of 4 which is n square because 2 to the power 2 is 4. So this is n to the power log base b of a and this is f of n. So you can see that f of n is n to the power log base b of a multiplied by log n. f of n has a larger rate of growth than n to the power log base b of a. So f of n is not in theta of n to the power log base b of a because it doesn't have the same rate of growth as this function. There is this extra log n factor. But f of n is in theta of n to the power log base b of a multiplied by log n. So this corresponds to the generalized version of case 2 with k equal to 1. Right, if we put k equal to 1 here, this becomes if f of n is theta of n to the power log base b of a multiplied by log n, which is what f of n is in the example, then the solution will be to just take to just take that f of n and multiply it by an additional log n factor. So the power of log n becomes k plus 1 instead of k. So in so f of n was n square log n and the solution here will be, will have an extra log n factor n square multiplied by log square n which is basically log n multiplied by log n. So this is the solution to this recurrence which we were unable to obtain earlier using the more simplified version of case 2 because f of n 
was not in theta of n to the power log base b of a so we couldn't apply that particular case but we also couldn't apply case 1 and case 3 because even though f of n was growing larger than n to the power log base b of a it was not polynomially larger so it was falling into it was falling into this gap between n to the power log base b of a and the functions which are polynomially larger than n to the power log base b of a so we couldn't apply uh, case 3 either we couldn't apply case 2 we couldn't apply case 3 and we couldn't apply case 1 but with this extension to uh, case 2 we can solve this recurrence exactly and the solution is the solution is t of n is theta of n square log square n once again we have to note that in the example we are taking k is equal to 1 the example we are taking is an example where this condition is satisfied with k equal to 1 k is a constant and so in the solution we have an extra power of n over and above what we had here so what we had here was n square log n so what we get in the solution is n square log square n now why does this work we need to prove this generalized version of case 2 because otherwise we may be using the generalization but we haven't really verified that it's indeed correct so let's try to prove it. If you recall, t of n in general was given as was given by the expression n to the power log base b of a multiplied by t of 1. This was the cost associated with the leaves of the recursion tree plus a summation representing the cost the costs associated with the different levels or the different internal nodes the non leaf nodes of the recursion tree so you sum the various level sums from level 0 to level h minus 1 where each level sum is given by a to the power i times f of n divided by b to the power i this is the level sum at level i. Now suppose you are given that f of n is theta of n to the power log base b of a multiplied by log to the power k n or log n to the power k. k is some constant greater than or equal to 0. If f of n is in theta of this function, this means that there exist two positive constants c1 and c2 such that f of n can be sandwiched between two constant multiples of this function. This follows from the definition of theta notation. So f of n is sandwiched between c1 times this function and c2 times this function. This is what is given to us. So assume that f of n satisfies this inequality or f of n is in theta of this function. We need to prove that in such cases the solution to the recurrence we are talking about the recurrence t of n equals a times t of n by b plus f of n. 
the solution to this recurrence under this circumstance is given by theta of n to the power log base b of a multiplied by log to the power k plus 1 of n. This is of course the solution proclaimed by the generalized version of case 2 but we need to prove it here. This is what we need to prove starting from what's given. So the way we are going to go about proving this is by separately proving that t of n is in big O of this function and pro proving that t of n is in big omega of this function. So if you are able to prove that this function or some constant multiple of this function is an upper bound on t of n and if you are able to prove that some other constant multiple of this function is a lower bound on t of n. Then we have proved that t of n is tightly bounded by this function. So this is a tight bound on t of n. So t of n is theta of this function. So our proof is going to have two parts. In the first part, we will prove the upper bound. We will prove the we will, we will prove the big O part of the uh, uh, of this claim. In the second part of the proof, we will prove the big omega part of this claim, and together they imply that t of n is theta of n to the power log base b of a multiplied by log to the power k plus one of n. So keep in mind this overall structure of the proof as we look at the details of the proof in the next few videos.